Hello friends. In this particular video tutorial, we are going to discuss three-dimensional geometry. So, uh, as you might have learned in your earlier classes, uh, the two-dimensional geometry. Let's first of all uh, make it a point to revise what we have learned in two-dimensional geometry, as it will be pivotal to your understanding of three-dimensional geometry. Uh, I assure you that if you have a uh, good grasp at two-dimensional geometry, as you have learned in earlier classes, it would be pretty easy, because Three-dimensional geometry is just another extension of two-dimensional geometry. All the formulas and everything will remain same. Just uh, analogous addition will occur. So uh, do note that the, three, the, the definition of three-dimensional geometry is two-dimensional geometry extended to the real world. So let's f let's move on. Uh, so here we have we can see that uh, in our two-dimensional geometry we had x-axis and y axis so in our three dimensional geometry by going our definition we have extended this to uh, another axis and added this z axis to this particular coordinate so these are the three coordinate axis and individually they determine three different coordinate planes so we have the uh, plane passing through x y plane x y uh, axis as this one which is called xy uh, plane and we have uh, yz plane since this is the yz plane this is the xz plane so you have three planes corresponding to uh, each pair of coordinate axis next uh, there are uh, the utmost uh, th there are to locate a point in three dimensional geometry we need three coordinates as we had uh, two, two uh, in two dimensional geometry we needed two coordinates so to have a point in three-dimensional geometry, let's say we have the coordinates as x, y, z. So to visualize it, uh, we'll uh, take a point uh, on the uh, diagonal of the cube, and the uh, whose other end is at O. That is zero, zero, zero. So to uh, if this particular coordinate uh, is x, y, z, x comma y comma z, then it can be located by moving parallel to x first to x unit then pa moving parallel to y y unit and then moving parallel to the z axis z unit to reach at a point you could reach simultaneously by first taking either y or either z but uh, it's generally easier if you take uh, the x then y and then z coordinate to reach a particular point always you uh, to locate a point in space you can work this uh, work through uh, these particular uh, method uh, that is going through x axis then y and then z okay before we go on to this particular table let's see what are the uh, different aspects of this particular coordinate system so in our two dimensional geometry when we had two axes and a, a single plane we had four quadrants that is this uh, that is the first quadrant then we had the second quadrant Sorry, this is then we have the second quadrant, then third quadrant, and fourth quadrant, and so on. But in this particular three-dimensional geometry, we have octants. That is, these three particular coordinate axes divide the whole space in eight particular octants. Octants. So we have octants. This is particularly the first octant in which both all the coordinates are positive. So this is the sign table. This is the first octant, referring to this particular part of the space then we have the second octant in which the x coordinate is negative so we have our x coordinate negative in this particular quadrant and y and z positive and the third octant is this one in which we have my uh, minus for x and minus for y and plus for z that is this particular the coordinate axis just at the opposite end of this particular is this particular region then we have the fourth quadrant that is uh, positive for x, negative for y, and positive for z. So we have this particular coordinate, this particular octant referring to the, this, referring to the fourth region. Similarly, you can uh, I there are regions just below that is five. One is just uh, five is just below one, six is just below two, seven is just below three, and eight is just below just below four. So uh, it's easy to visualize through this particular pictorial representation so I would like you to just adhere to this particular 
representation by the time you get a good grasp of various coordinate systems okay so after we have looked into how to get a point let's calculate uh, distance of a point from the origin so let o be the origin and p be the point so to locate uh, so to locate what we did is just we uh, drew this particular path and determine this particular cube so we had this x y and z so to calculate the distance we have to calculate this op particular length so to calculate op what we'll do is first of all let's try to calculate ob so as you see, as you see that oab angle is 90 degree let's mark it down let's mark it out this is angle 90 degree oh i think this is not clearly visible so let's take another color let's take red sorry this is not red so uh, let's take red so this particular angle is 90 degree so applying pythagoras theorem in this particular triangle that is oab we have ob square equals to oa square plus ab square let's revert back there and then uh, calculating this particular distance op requires this ob length and pb length so if you will try to visualize this then you will find that this particular angle that is obp is also 90 degree it may not seem through this figure but i assure you if you try to visualize it you will easily get that it is also 90 degree so now we have this angle also 90 degree and we will apply pythagoras theorem in triangle obp to get op so we uh, this is the same as we what we done op square equals to pb square plus ab square and now we have ob square sorry it's ob square now we'll put ob square from this particular equation into this equation to get op square equals to oa square plus ab square plus pb square now as ob ob square is equal to x here ob square equals to x then we have ab equals to y and pb equals to z so basically we obtain a formula for the distance of the point p from the origin as x square plus y square plus z square if we try to calculate the distance of the point or uh, of the point from another point let's say we have two points p that that is uh, that has a coordinate x1 comma y1 comma z1 and q which has a coordinate x2 comma y2 comma z2 then the distance formula would come out to be just the extension of what we have learned for two dimensional geometry that is x1 minus x2 square plus y1 minus y2 square plus z1 minus z2 square So uh, that's why I asked you to just study your two-dimensional geometry first, because as you will see that uh, the distance formula in two-dimensional geometry was on, uh, was only this one, and in three-dimensional geometry only the z part is added. Okay, moving on. Uh, so this is the formal final formula for the distance between two particular points. So moving on to uh, the section formula, we have uh, this particular. Uh, coordinate axis we have this point p this point q uh, p has coordinates x1 y1 z1 and q has a coordinate x2 y2 z2 so uh, we have to calculate this uh, coordinate of this particular point which divides this line pm in the ratio m is to n so, do, so to do this in uh, the two dimensional geometry we considered uh, we got the equation uh, we, uh, we got the coordinate as the x coordinate was equal to let's raise this first the x coordinate was equal to m x2 plus n x1 upon m plus n and similarly we had y if we replace uh, x from y in uh, all the all the uh, in the whole the term and uh, got the coordinate of this particular point so let's first of all reveal the answer itself so what we will have is uh, the what we will have is the final coordinate of this particular point that is the point R will be similar only that the z axis will be added and z, z coordinate will also be equal to something of this sort that is mz1 plus uh, sorry mz2 plus nz1 upon m plus n so basically we have similarity in the section formula also for the uh, for this particular point so let's now try to prove what we have just derived 
so uh, let's now prove what we have just considered to be true by the extension from 2D so uh, to, cal to derive this particular result what we will do is that we will drop perpendiculars from point P to the XY plane and from Q and from R also so we have dropped three perpendiculars that is PL and extended this PL till S so that SR is equal to RN and we have uh, done the same with QT uh, done the same with QM we have ex uh, taken a point T such that S, uh, RN is equal to TN so now we have two, per uh, two parallelograms that is SR and L is a parallelogram S R N L and R N T M are parallelograms. Okay. So after we have got that they are parallelograms, we see that triangle S P R is similar to triangle T Q R. So let's write it down. I just said S P R is similar to T Q R so we have these two triangles as similar you can work this out by simply taking that seeing that this particular angle will be equal to this particular angle as this line is parallel to this line and this particular angle will also be equal to this particular angle because we, they are vertically opposite angles so basically by a property you have that these two triangles what we will use is uh, that this particular length and this the ratio of this particular length to this particular length is given to be m is to n so we have m is to n is equal to pr upon qr uh, equals to sp upon qt so we've used this relation and put sp equals to sl minus pl and qt as qm minus tm so we, after uh, putting this now we use uh, the parallelograms property that SL is equal to RN. Uh, uh, before we go on, uh, we've taken the coordinates of R as XYZ. So we have, uh, since we since uh, SRNL is a parallelogram, we have SL equals to RN. So we'll substitute SL uh, for, we'll substitute NR for SL. And similarly for TM, we have TM equals to RN because RTMN is a parallelogram. So we have substituted this and uh, now we have uh, NR is equal to the Z coordinate of R that is Z and PL is the Z coordinate of P that is Z1. QM is the Z coordinate of, Z, uh, of Q and NR is the again the Z coordinate of Z of R. So we have this particular relation. After doing a simple manipulation we obtain that Z is equal to mz2 plus nz1 upon m plus n so we can do similarly for all the uh, other uh, triangle uh, all the other coordinates also by taking the uh, this particular scenario like uh, to uh, to calculate z coordinates we have uh, drawn perpendiculars to the xy plane that is we have drawn perpendiculars perpendiculars to x y plane to uh, derive the x coordinate we can similarly work out by drawing perpendiculars to the y z coordinates perpendiculars to y z plane and we can draw z uh, uh, we can we, uh, to find out the y coordinate we can draw perpendiculars to the x z plane so the final result comes out to be that x coordinate is this y coordinate of the point r is and the z coordinate is uh, is is also similar that is m z2 plus n z1 upon m m plus n so uh, the coordinates of r are these particular x y z all the other uh, tricks remain uh, similar to as that in the uh, two dimensional case Therefore, I would like you to revise once more your all the concepts of the two-dimensional geometry.